Hello, I am Astora Noble and we have commentary now. So this is going to be my first commentary ever on YouTube and I'm very new so hopefully this goes well. Um, so yeah, we'll kick things off with episode 4, Thy Flesh Consumed is our next installment of the Doom 100% walkthrough on the Ultra Violence difficulty. A couple things to say before I start, I am... I made the switch over to the GZ Doom source port for this episode, and I'm going to be using that for all the subsequent episodes of the Doom walkthroughs, even for Doom 2 and Sigil when I get to it. Um, not that there was anything wrong with the Unity port that I was using. I mean, it ran perfectly fine, it was very smooth, and there might have been only one issue I had with it, but it was easily fixable and it didn't break anything. But yeah, I just prefer to play through GZ Doom a lot more because it's more smooth. At least I feel it's more smooth. It's a lot more customizable. It's mod friendly. There's features like mouse look and um, you can jump and crouch. Although I haven't really found a use for crouch. I'm not really going to be using mouse look for this though because uh, I didn't use mouse look for the first three episodes and I'm not going to use it now. So yeah, episode four, Thy Flesh Consumed at uh, level one. Hell Beneath. This map is tough. Um, I think it's notoriously tough, actually. Um, in my opinion, excluding things like the Plutonia Experiment, Hell Beneath is probably the hardest level in any Doom game, including Eternal in 2016. For a lot of reasons. I mean, you'll see them as, as, as we play this level, so getting 100% on this level can be a little bit tricky. Uh, but I'm going to showcase here a strategy that I tend to use when I play this map, and it works pretty consistently for me. There are some variables here and there that might put a hitch in your gameplay. So hopefully this this run through we can get everything to, if we can get all the enemies to behave so we can move on to the next level, which is even more fun. So let's go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> You're going to start off in this small room with a shotgun and some shells right ahead of you, but beware this isn't ambush and very important ambush as soon as you walk through this doorway right here about eight shotgunners will, will spawn in and uh how you handle this ambush in particular is going to set the tone for the rest of the map because as you'll see you can't really make a lot of mistakes here there's almost no health pickups in this map and the ones that there are are small little potion vials that don't really heal you that much i think it, they only heal you about uh 1% of health at a time. So, hopefully we can do this well. Hold your nose, here it goes. Wow. Oop, I didn't expect that last one. Should have counted. All right. That went pretty well, actually. Oop, did I hear something else? Oh, the imps across there. Go ahead and take out my pistol. Like in most levels, or the beginning of most episodes for Doom, I'm going to use the pistol on the onesies, twosies enemies just to save ammo on the shotgun, the weapon that's more important. So yeah, I didn't handle that, am that ambush too badly, actually. I think one of them clipped me a little bit, but overall not too bad. Ideally, you wouldn't want to take any uh, any damage at all, but with hit scanners, it can, it can be a little bit difficult. So once you clear that out, <clears throat> across there's going to be this room with a, about four imps inside you want to take them out nice and methodical. I'm just going to use the shotgun here just to speed things up a little bit. This is a pretty small level, but boy is it tough. Okay, so you're going to... Uh, which one... Which do I want to handle first? I guess I'll handle the secret first. So this secret, this platform over here, this the one in this corner, it actually lowers and there's a number of ways. There's about two ways to do it. There might be more. One way is you can just run across the slime river and hit and uh, hit the switch to lower it like that, or uh, you could just go over here. This is what I tend to do because it's safer. What you want to do is stand as far back on this platform as you can without falling down, and then lower it that way, and then run in over here without taking too much damage. That tends to work pretty well for me. Just want to be quick about doing it. Now. These two teleporters will both take you to about the same vicinity of the map, so it doesn't particularly matter which one you take first. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the one on the left. So, <clears throat> now that we've done that, 
we, that allowed us to go up on this platform, which is where the shotgunners would have been originally. To get to the other one and get the ammo that's up there, what you're supposed to do and how you would handle this in the Unity port that I was playing, or Classic, or, or the Classic Doom, or any other source port that doesn't have Mouse Look or any, any of the features of GZ Doom, you would have to go back down there and take the other teleporter that you didn't take to get back up there. But GZ Doom comes with the added ability to jump, which I will not be using too much of because, in my opinion, the jump mechanic in GZ Doom can be a bit abused to the point where it can you can access skips on levels that break the flow of the levels a little bit too much. What was that? Oh, he can see me through there. <laughs> the shotgunner was shooting at me. So as I was saying, certain uses of the jump mechanic in GZ Doom can break the flow of certain levels, allowing you pretty, pretty ridiculous skips. But in situations like this, I feel like the jump mechanic is perfectly appropriate, where otherwise it doesn't add anything to the level other than you just avoiding taking needless damage. So there I think it's fine. So now we're going to go back over here. And you're going to see these armor pickups, which of course are going to count in the final total of 100% items. Uh, we're going to hold off on picking them up for just a second. So for now, we're going to flip this switch, go back over, <clears throat> and you're going to see two specters are going to come in. And just like pinkies, they're only going to take about two to three shots. If you're really unlucky, four shots with the shotgun. Take them out. And you want to be careful not to go too far out because then the shotgunners on the, on the platform that we saw earlier are going to see you. So now that we got them, we can go over here and peekaboo shoot them. I got them both. And then pick up this armor. And once you do that, you can go back here and pick up these armor bonuses that we didn't pick up before. And the reason that you do that is because if had you done it, the original order where you pick up the armor bonuses then go for the vest once you see it that way you would only wind up at 100% armor whereas if you do it the other way around you can wind up at 106% because little bonuses like that you can pick up beyond 100% and the vest just maxes it out. You could argue that it's not too much of a bonus but on this map I think every little bit helps. So now that we've done that we're gonna go to this next room <clears throat> they already know that we're here. And we're going to turn to the left. Take out these shotgunners. Yeah, you don't necessarily want to dawdle like I am. Because there is an enemy-only teleporter in that building. That if they step into it, they will teleport right here behind you. So let me just make sure that is that. I'm going to use the pistol on them. Okay, got them. You're going to see health bonuses over there. Do not get them. Going over to that area will alert all the enemies in the map to your location and they will swarm you. And then you're going to have a bad time. So just hold on, hold off on that for right now. We're going to go over here. Take out the shotgunner across the way and the one right there. Deal with some of the imps in there. Oh, he teleported too, you see? The teleporter does come in handy in just a little bit. Deal with this specter right here. There we go. Then you come over here, deal with these imps, just like usual. Oh. You see, one of the reasons that this map is uh, can be a pain is because there's so little room to maneuver. It's very cramped, so it's hard. It's harder to dodge projectiles. So you go over here, and you can pick up these health bonuses. These ones are safe to pick up. And then we're gonna go back over here and make our way into this building because it's safe to go in now. Safe is a relative term in this map. So we're going to go in, take out the imps on either side, and pick up our shotgun ammo here. And now this is the part of the map that gets incredibly hairy. Things can get ugly real quick here. You're going to go up and pick up this chain gun, although I'm not going to use it. I'm going to take out the rest of the imps here. There's still one more, but he's not going to make too much of a difference in a moment. So. What happens here is after you get to the top of this stairwell, you're going to enter a room where there's two fake walls on either side. You can't move, you can't walk through them or lower them or anything, but the way they work is enemies can see through them 
and once you pass their threshold where, they, where you're in their line of sight, um, you're going to alert them and they will teleport in via the enemy only teleporter that's right here. So you are going to be you're going to want to be very quick about the way you approach this. So what you do, I like to get out the chain gun and be very quick about going here, pick up the red key, take out enemies as they spawn in. The Baron's going to spawn in and you want him to teleport away from you. You do not want to deal with him in this room. I'll show you how to do it. He can see you from over there. Hopefully, sometimes the enemies don't all spawn out and they like to troll me. But I think they all spawned out. So now that we're in this safe spot, the Baron is over here with a bunch of imps. If we're lucky, one of them will hit the Baron and the Baron will take out all the imps for us and we can save a bunch of ammo. But always be aware that his shots can hit you pretty quick in this room. I want him to start infighting with the imps. That one kind of confused me. There we go. I think the Baron just took out one of the imps. I would like to, I would like for him to do it more, but it looks like he's not going to do that for us this time around. So I'll go ahead and handle this my, uh, by myself. Oh, there we go. Now he's angry at him. So he can go, go ahead and do that, and now... I'm going to use my rockets on him. Keep in mind that this is a pretty small room, so you don't want to fire the rocket too close to the wall or something. I'm going to fire only a certain amount of rockets at him because I can just use the shotgun here to take out the rest of his health, just like that. So if you didn't see earlier, we got the red key from right here. It's going to come in handy. So we're going to go back to the starting room. via this lift. Oh, and right now you can pick these up. Sometimes I forget these and don't wind up getting 100% items. <laughs> I have to redo the whole map again. But yeah, when you come back over here, make sure that you get all the stragglers if you can find any, like these two. Ah, screw it, I'll just use the chain gun on them. I don't have to use the pistol. All right, this last room. <clears throat> is the make or break moment. You're gonna go in, collect these armor bonuses, and behind this wall are going to be a column of imps. You wanna make sure they all get taken down, and now you're gonna go in here and be quick about it. Get the red key, hit, I mean blue key, get the switch, then go out. You can hear a wall lowering in there. Sometimes the enemies will teleport out, but not all the time. To get to trigger their teleportation, you fire a shot. And you want to hear the barons. The barons are key to this next part. You go, you go back in here to your safe little corner and wait for all the enemies to come in. Don't really have to worry too much about specters, but the enemies that throw projectiles are gonna be are gonna be a problem. And now I really, really want the Barons to fight with the other enemies in this level. I want them to handle as many of the enemies by themselves so I don't have to. And yes, you see there are four more Barons of Hell in this map. And they're fighting. <clears throat> I'm sorry if this isn't the most riveting gameplay of Doom 1 that's out there. I am trying to take it pretty slow just to showcase this strategy and how effective it can be. It's a little bit slower and methodical and to the point where it's not that entertaining, but this is a tough map and I think it deserves some time to explain exactly everything that's going on. So once the Barons take care of that, you can unload the rest of your rocket launcher on the, onto them. But be careful, <laughs> they can still shoot you. Maybe we'll have enough ammo to take them both out. I doubt it. It's kind of rare to do that. There's one. There's the other. Oh my goodness, there's another. I'm not sure how much damage that one actually took. We'll see. Oop. 
Oh boy. I don't know how much of the rockets he actually got hit with. But he will go down eventually. Just make sure you're dodging his projectiles. There we go. So 18 shots is not that good of a spot to be in. And that should be all the enemies, unless there's some stragglers in the other room. We'll, we'll check. Yep, it looks like there's one straggler. Now, you could just go back through the lift. Or you could just lower this. Or raise this. This isn't a secret, but it's just a cool way. I'm hearing another enemy, but I'm not sure where it is. I'm gonna double check. Oh, there he is. That's our enemy. Now he's taken out. Now the secret, the final secret to this map is a is a is a bit of an odd one. You're gonna you're gonna walk it back into this room where the enemies tele teleported in from and see the nine inch nails logo written on the ground. Don't ask me why. From what I understand, Trent Reznor, the lead singer of Nine Inch Nails, was a huge fan of the Doom games. He even did a uh, he even made the sound effects and soundtrack for the original Quake, I believe. But yeah, the secret is to just step here into this lettering. The, the triggering can be a little bit wonky for the secret. Sometimes you got to step in just the right spot. People who play on the Unity port like I was playing in other source ports might not have an issue getting this to trigger. But if you do have an issue to tr uh, triggering this and you're on GZ Doom, you can... Not freeze. That's not the right. You can enter a console command, no clip. And then walking in there should reveal the secret. So I'm going to turn that off. And now originally, if you were in this room and were waiting for this secret to spawn, you would have stepped in here, lowered this, and be trapped in this cramped space with four barons of hell. It's a secret death trap is what it is, but to raise it back up, just flip that switch, and we're back in here. And that should be everything. That should be everything for this map. Let's make sure we didn't miss any armor pickups. I don't think that we did. Okay. Now, we're going to make our way over to the blue door. Go in. And that's it. That is 100% on Hell Beneath. Yeah, it took a little bit longer to do that one. But I think you need to take your time on this map. It's a, it's a tough map. Like I said, in my opinion, it's the toughest map in Doom 1 and all of, in all of Doom, excluding the Plutonia experiment. The next map, Perfect Hatred, is quite a wild map. And uh, I'll see you then.